Good afternoon, and here we are at the Centre for Computing History, this very quiet Sunday evening. The public have all gone home, but I thought I'd like to show you our latest little display here. So it's long overdue, we've wanted to do something with our pet range for quite a while. We've got an enormous amount of pets here, but we've just put a select few out, starting with our beautiful 2001. This one is one of the really early ones, doesn't even have an eject button, you literally just lift the lid up, play stop, fast forward, etc, etc. This is the one with the lovely blue bezel around there. I wish they kept that, it's very, very nice indeed. Those of you that know the IT crowd really well, I think it's series one. This is actually the pet that I think is behind um, Moss. So it's one of the things used in the IT crowd. Okay, so I've moved on now to the 3000 series. So this is where you'll be able to actually experience the uh, pet in action. This is the interactive part of the display. We will have more up and running, but anyone who knows Commodore pets, know they are not actually super reliable. So um, the one at the end was working, now isn't. This was working as well, but decided to start having a bit of a jittery screen. So this is the main part, but what you'll be able to do here is literally um, operate a pet as you would have done back in the 1970s. So we've got instructions on here. So I can, uh, let's do, try and load something very quickly. I always do that, I hold shift down to do um, inverted commas when it's got its own key invader comma eight because we're loading from a disk drive and here's its beautiful big disk drive here the model 8e50 we're going to put the sign in front of it to stop people taking out the disk and eating them or something um, so searching for invader so we've got a lovely little uh, buzz from the disk drive there and it has loaded and we can now run the program and here we have Pet Invaders, which we can actually play. Plays quite a fiendish version of Space Invaders. Has it got sound? <laughs> Hell no. Um, not with this configuration anyway. So nice little version of um, Space Invaders there. Then our volunteer Alan has made it so that you can just press this button up here to reset the pet instead of having to reach around the back and turn it off. So that's our nice little interactive part. The models, uh, 3000 series, so you've got a 16-bit one, a uh, 16-bit, sorry, I do apologise. We've got a 16K version and a 32K version. Um, this is actually a little bit of a cheat. Someone has actually put a 32K board in this one, even though it says 16. Proper business keyboard, unlike the little horrible chiclet keyboard we've got over here. And um, this is actually the same motherboard as in the last iteration of the 2001 series, so the 2001 N board is in this machine here. Right, so we will now move on to the 4000 series. The circuitry in these had been tidied up a lot more, so the machine was a lot more efficient. You could attach now an awful lot more um, things to it, tractor printers, all the rest of it, had a whole load of new buses. Um, also, I should have pointed out this time, the 3000 series and the um, 4000 series no longer have PET as their name. That's basically because um, Philips owned a patent for the name PET for another technology. So then they, they've just changed it to CBM or Commodore Business Machines and the model number. To everyone, they still call them PET, basically. Um, now this came with two sizes of screen. So we've got the nine inch screen, much like these ones down here. This has got the larger 12 inch screen. Now it's actually called the FAT32, not a name we'd like to use nowadays, but there you go. And just denoted this rather funky screen here. Much the same machine otherwise, but they had just put a new board in it, tidied everything up a little bit. And um, also they had punched out the eight and 16 K um, sockets because people were still buying the lower K models, which were cheaper, and then upgrading them to 32K. So that basically stopped that from happening. You could go up to 64K with this now. Um, I'm also having a little look down here. It was very, very successful in schools. And so we will now move on to 
probably our rarest pet that we got here. So the next one along. Okay, here we are with one of our prize machines here at the museum. This is the Super Pet or the SP9000. What this is, it's basically a 8032 machine with the larger screen and it has some additional boards inside. So what it's able to do, you are able to swap between the usual 6502 processor and a 6809 processor. Those of you who are fans of the Dragon will know that that is the processor within the Dragon. So that just enabled it to do slightly different tasks. It was developed with universities in mind, developed by a university in Canada originally, and it is essentially, yes, this machine behind us here, but we've got these little switches on the side, so we're able to switch on the fly from processor to processor. If it's using the 6809, it will bring a menu up. That menu will basically have, uh, I think it's, is it four or five programming languages? Pascal, COBOL, um, its own basic, and much as everything else is still from the original PET, you are able to actually go and load one of these programs which we're hoping to try and do, we're hoping to get another disk drive and then have this Super Pet um, disk in so we can actually go through that process for real. So that is our lovely Super Pet. Um, we'll now move on to the final one in the series. Okay, so here is our last machine in the line here. This is our Commodore 8296D. So this is an 8000 series machine. So it's quite an evolution from the previous ones. It's got a new basic. It's got an entirely new shape, designed by Porsche Design, no less. So uh, very, very curved design. Uh, its impact in America was really stunted by the fact that it used the 6502 processor um, and so it couldn't do CPM. Um, there was talk they were going to put a dual compatibility in it, but it did not occur. What we have got for the first time, though, in its monitor is an 80 column display. So really, really good for business use. And this is what's called an SK. So the SK basically stands for separate keyboard. So joined by a cable here, it gives it this really quite nice look. A lot of the models did not have a disk drive in them. They're still using external drives. This one is the 8296, which dash D, which um, we might get told off for this. We've somehow deduced it might stand for two disk drives, so it's a two dual drives there. Um, our one has gone a little bit yellow. Don't talk to us about retro brighting, it isn't going to happen. So basically, um, it, the keys have gone a little bit yellow there. But it's a lovely looking machine, and this kind of um, look here was carried on into the PET 2 series. So that's the Commodore uh, P500. Uh, which was the home version. Then there was also the B version, which was for business. Didn't do very well in the marketplace. The only ones that came out in significant numbers was the Commodore P500, which is also here in the collection. Um, so that's just a little look at some of the pets we've got here. Come and have a go with them yourselves. If you like the work we're doing with our videos, do like and subscribe. Come and visit us at the museum and you can see lots more wonderful things like this. Thank you. And goodbye. Good. Oh.